My name is Tom Dempsey. I work with the Nature Conservancy here in California, uh, and I lead our uh, sustainable fisheries program. So we look to improve the practices and, and the approaches taken to ensure that we have both healthy oceans here in California and thriving fisheries. One of the, the chief concerns is the entanglement of whales as they migrate along our coasts. And that's why it's so important um, that we find new ways to, to really catalyze a, a wholesale recovery, uh, retrieval of that lost gear and get it out of the way, um, uh, and reduce the risks for, uh, for those animals. We've been working, the Conservancy has been working in, in fisheries along California for a number of years. Uh, and as this issue uh, really started to gain urgency, as, as we saw the number of observed entanglements increase uh, here in California, and particularly in the Dungeness crab fishery, uh, the Conservancy started to get involved, started to think about ways we may be uh, able to help contribute to the solutions here. Uh, and we started to partner with um, fishermen uh, groups along the coast of California, uh, trying to think where, where the best uh, bang for the buck would be in terms of reducing the risks for whales uh, and supporting our goal of, of maintaining thriving commercial fisheries. And so we started a partnership uh, with Half Moon Bay uh, commercial fishermen and we started to think about ways that we could really uh, expand and improve the efficiency of lost gear removal. Frankly, uh, engaging with uh, harvesters and resource users is, is part of the DNA of the Nature Conservancy. Uh, we have a long history of working with landowners and ranchers uh, to find solutions to uh, conservation challenges on land. Um, and we actually have uh, quite a bit of history here in California uh, working with a whole range of fishermen trying to find solutions to um, uh, issues like uh, over harvesting and habitat protection in, in a host of fisheries. So, it is uh, uh, somewhat unique. It, it is um, specific to uh, uh, only a subset of, of uh, conservation groups, and there are a lot out there, uh, but it's something we have a lot of uh, history doing and, and we feel uh, helps drive um, some meaningful solutions. I think that's a, one of the most important questions is how, how we create a durable, uh, flexible program moving forward. It has to be self-sustaining. So one of the key things that we thought about as, as we uh, dive into this challenge is over time we need to get away from uh, one-off grants and, and philanthropic dollars funding this gear recovery in certain ports or in certain fisheries in, in a year or two years and then pulling up stakes and, and, and moving somewhere else. We need to find a self-sustaining model where uh, the fishery uh, can actually go out and recover this gear, uh, is motivated and incentivized to go out and recover this gear, and that the, uh, the funds were uh, returned for re you know, uh, sending that gear back to the original owners actually support uh, the recovery efforts themselves. So our aim is a scalable, replicable, and self-funded program uh, that can be used uh, around the country. Things that people often forget uh, or, or don't know to start with is that commercial fishermen don't want to lose their gear. This is inadvertent. Um, they have every incentive to track that gear and get it back with the boat. I mean, these are business assets. So almost every commercial fisherman that I've worked with or talked to is motivated to reduce lost gear and then retrieve it after the fact. Um, and frankly, the lost gear recovery efforts, uh, no matter where they are in the country, fundamentally couldn't work without commercial and recreational fishermen. We need their information, their observations of where that lost gear is, and we need uh, to use their boats and, and to partner with them um, to recover that in order to reduce risk for whales. 